When I turned 18, my parents kicked me out. Now, 10 years later, they've lost everything. I'm a 30-year-old male, and my parents never really wanted children. I was an only child, essentially an accidental pregnancy according to what my relatives have told me. My parents had always claimed they intended to be child-free when they got married. My childhood started off well, but as I grew older and moved past the cute and adorable phase, my parents became less interested in spending time with me. Both of them worked and ran a business they started together. That business consumed their lives, and I was always secondary to it. Other close family members, like my grandparents, lived out of state, and I barely knew anything about them until I became an adult, with no other family around. My entire childhood was essentially raised by TV and my school teachers. By the time I became a teenager, my birthdays were often spent without my parents. They would just give me some money and tell me to go out and buy whatever I wanted. It was the same with Christmas, and sometimes even for back-to-school shopping. We didn't even have a Christmas tree after I turned 10. Except for the year I convinced my parents to buy a fake one that I could build up and take apart every year. If you were to describe my parents, think of people who were always in black, drank lots of wine, and looked down on others. When I last saw them, they still looked and acted the same way although my father always wore a tie. When I turned 16, I asked my parents if I could work part-time for their business, but they simply told me there were no open positions. It might as well have been that they didn't want me involved. After turning 18, my parents informed me that since I was an adult, they expected me to move out as soon as I was able. I had been working part-time while still in high school, but I didn't have enough savings for college. Shortly after high school ended, my parents gave me an official eviction notice with 30 days to move out. They didn't help me move. I had to get assistance from a friend's dad who owns a truck. I ended up renting a crappy apartment and working in retail. With no real life experience and no time for college, I struggled. After just a few months, I got fired because my manager had it out for me, writing me up for trivial reasons that I can't even remember now. I wasn't the only one. Other employees faced the same treatment. I and a few others called corporate about it, leading to the manager's termination for various reasons, including theft of cigarettes due to being a chain smoker. Despite this, corporate refused to rehire me, only changing my record to show I was laid off instead of terminated, keeping my resume clean. However, I quickly went broke because I was terrible at managing money and couldn't find steady employment, resulting in the loss of my apartment. Desperate. I went back to my parents begging for help, but they refused to take me in, not even temporarily. I became homeless, living out of a tent in someone's backyard during the winter. My friends had all moved on to college, some in other states, leaving me a broke kid taking whatever jobs I could to survive. My salvation came when one of my parents' neighbors discovered I was living in a tent and offered to take me in temporarily to prevent me from freezing. She helped persuade my parents to provide me with contact information for other members of my estranged family. My parents, fearing judgment for how they treated me, were reluctant but eventually gave me a list of contact details and told me not to bother them again. I reached out to my paternal grandparents, who were very surprised and happy to hear from me since they hadn't seen me since I was an infant. As their only grandchild, they immediately flew me over to live with them, effectively adopting me. My parents didn't even see me off at the airport despite being invited. For nearly a decade I had zero contact with them. My grandparents despised my parents for treating me so poorly and legally disowned them by removing them from their wills. My parents were unhappy about this but claimed it didn't matter because they were well off and didn't need anything from my grandparents. However, this proved to be wrong. After about a year living with my grandparents, I managed to afford community college. I earned an associate's degree and secured a decent job thanks to a recommendation from my grandpa. Eventually, my grandparents offered to sell me their house so they could retire to Arizona. My grandma wanted a warmer climate as the cold winters were taking a toll on her health. Each year, I was sad to see them go, but I happily bought the house. They sold it to me for a third of its value, and I'll have it paid off in a few more years. My job involves traveling on the road periodically meaning I'm away from home for weeks at a time. I don't mind the travel. I have no pets or girlfriend, so I won't have time for those things right now. However, in a few years, once I have things in order, 
I'll make time because I don't want to stay a lonely bachelor forever. Then, one day in late 2020, I came home after being away for over two weeks to find a large white van in my driveway that I didn't recognize. I was about to call the police when I noticed the van had the logo of my parents' business on the side. A feeling of dread washed over me as I realized my parents had somehow broken in and were living in my home. They had the nerve to greet me as if we were buddies. The moment I walked in, I told them to leave, but they refused because it was grandma and grandpa's house. I reminded them that they had sold the house to me when they retired and should have known not to involve themselves in my life after throwing me out ten years prior with no life experience. We argued and they refused to leave. My father claimed it was his parents' house first, giving him and my mother the right to live there if they wanted. Frustrated, I walked into my bedroom, locked the door, and called the police. When the cops arrived, they were no help. My parents lied to them, claiming they had been there long enough to have residency, which wasn't true, without cameras to prove otherwise. It was my word against theirs regarding how long they'd been there, and they were claiming squatters' rights. They told the police they had a verbal rental agreement, and that I was trying to legally evict them for no reason. My mother even cried, saying the police deemed it a family dispute and advised me to file for eviction through the courts. This was during the pandemic, making court proceedings even longer. Meanwhile, my parents continued squatting in my house rent-free, flaunting the fact that their business had gone bankrupt, and they'd sold almost everything to pay their debts. All they had left was the van and a few personal belongings, so they expected to live in my house indefinitely. They found new jobs. My father as a delivery driver and my mother as a sales associate, and started contributing minimally to utilities, giving me a $100 bill each month and telling me to be grateful. Whenever I tried to discuss proper rent, they insisted I owed it to them for taking 18 years of their lives and weren't demanding money back for that time. They even threatened to stop paying utilities altogether. At my wit's end, I called my grandparents to explain the situation. They were very unhappy and spoke with my parents, but my parents still claimed the right to stay in my home and refused to budge. My grandpa apologized, saying if my parents hadn't sold me the house, they wouldn't have invaded. I assured him I had already filed for a legal eviction and that my parents knew they were on borrowed time. I mentioned my parents were within earshot, and they responded with the silent treatment. My father was often away driving a delivery vehicle six days a week, a job he didn't like while my mother tried to take over my house in her spare time. She demanded to rearrange my living room and even tried to force me to give her and my father the master bedroom, claiming they deserved better. I vetoed both requests, telling her they didn't deserve better and to stop acting like I owed them anything. I expressed that I didn't ask to be born and that it was a normal obligation for parents to raise their children. All they were doing was trying to assert dominance to prevent me from evicting them. After four months and moving into early 2021, I finally took my parents to court over their squatting. We had to go to court because they fought the eviction and tried to gaslight me into rescinding it. They attempted to use the fact that it was formerly my grandparents' house and their minimal $100 monthly contribution as leverage for residency. However, there was no real rental agreement and they cleverly avoided forging one to prevent fraud charges. The judge ordered they leave within 30 days as they had zero claim to my house. After the court ruling, my parents confronted me, expressing disappointment for kicking out their own flesh and blood. I couldn't help but laugh and called them hypocrites because that's exactly what they did to me without caring about my well-being. They had no love for me, so I had no love for them. I owed them nothing. They tried to act like everything that was mine was theirs, but they had no right to call themselves my parents because they've never truly acted like it. I called them snobby, lying narcissists and told them to get their affairs in order. Warning them I'd call the police if they didn't leave when the 30 days were up. My father looked enraged, but my mother stopped him by grabbing his shoulder and shaking her head. He sneered at me and walked away. They left, but the tension remained. The final month was spent with them, either guilting me to change my mind or completely ignoring me. I put up a calendar in the living room marking each day they needed to leave with a red circle. The final day was March 2nd. My parents waited until the exact day they had to leave my home for good before they finally left, even though all their belongings were out of the house, and they spent a few days sleeping on the floor in the guest room. 
convinced they could make me let them stay. They didn't bother to find an apartment until after the court eviction was finalized. My mother spent weeks scrambling to find a new place, eventually securing a tiny, crappy studio apartment in the next city over, because it was the only option available on such short notice. It was ironic, similar to what I had to do when I was eight. I drove my mother over to see it once, and the apartment was terrible. The walls were baby barf green. The carpet looked 20 years old. The only window had a view of a brick wall outside. There was no dishwasher. The stove was the smallest I'd ever seen, and the toilet desperately needed replacing. The walls did little to block out noise from neighbors. There were already two people loudly fighting in the adjacent apartment during our visit. My mother gave me sad looks and dropped hints that I should feel guilty for forcing them to live in such a place. But I acted oblivious until she finally stopped. Hay signed the lease immediately and moved their limited belongings into the apartment over the weekend. They also demanded the queen-sized bed, dresser, and flat-screen TV from my guest room. I told them to take the things because I no longer wanted them in the after spending five months sleeping in that room. They looked at me as if I was treating them like diseased and demanded nothing more. On the day they had to leave for good, I started changing the locks on all exterior doors. All their belongings were in the apartment, and they had spent their last night in my guest room. They watched me remove the old lock from the front door as they got into the van. They said nothing, and I said nothing. But they sat and watched me until I had installed the new doorknob. Finally, they left and I breathed a massive sigh of relief thinking karma had finally caught up with them. But no, my grandparents recently heard from them. They had called to brag about their new business, similar to their old one, in the same state I'm living in now. They are on track to regain their previous status before the pandemic, making good money and looking down on others. I've googled their new business, and it seems to be doing well with many positive reviews. I'm extremely resentful because they put me through homelessness, squatted rent-free in my house for months, and then reverted to being the snobby, wine-drinking business people they used to be. If karma is real, it's taking way too long. Assessed it. I want to thank everyone for all the constructive advice and the points being made about selling the house. I'm realizing they have merit. I asked my grandparents if moving closer to them would be a good idea. They told me that if I want to sell the house, I should go ahead since my parents would have no clue where I am if I move away. I'm heavily considering it now and plan to see if my company can transfer me down south. I wouldn't mind the warmer climate since I've hated winter, ever since I had to live in a tent. I don't have many friends where I'm currently, as I'm kind of a loner, so starting over somewhere farther away wouldn't be too hard. I'm attached to this house, but I didn't grow up in it, so moving is an option. I understand the need for more cameras and we're looking into that. For those wondering how my parents broke in and fooled the police, it's simple. They entered through an unlocked window by removing the screen and opening it. They found my spare house keys on a hook near the kitchen and copied them to claim squatter's rights to the police, asserting we had a prior verbal agreement. My parents presented working house keys to the cops and lied, claiming I'd let them move in. They had already filed for an address change with the DMV online before I'd even returned home and showed the police a printout of that, saying their new IDS with my address were soon to arrive in the mail. The cops were annoyed and treated it as a domestic issue, advising me to file for eviction like a normal person. I wish I'd gotten their badge numbers to report them. Small addition. My parents had their mail redirected to my house, another tactic to claim residency. If they lived in my house for more than 30 days with permission, squatter's rights would make them tenants, they falsely claimed they had my permission and used every dirty trick to convince the police they had the right to be there. There was no way to confirm or deny how long they'd been living in the house, leading to a situation where everyone pointed fingers and the police didn't know whom to believe. That's why I had to go to court to evict them. I refused to give my parents the Wi-Fi password since they weren't contributing to that utility. But they used their smartphones to run a mobile hotspot for internet access the entire time they were squatting in my house. For those suggesting I leave bad reviews or expose my parents' past, there's really no point. I'm going to take the high road and forget about them. However, if they committed fraud to start their new business, I'll get some popcorn when that comes back to haunt them. Because they'd inevitably call someone for help. Edit 2?
for those who don't believe the 30-day squatter rule. Here's a direct USA law on the matter. In most areas, anyone who lives on your property for more than 30 days with permission can claim tenant rights under the law. You usually need to go through an eviction process. However, if permission was never given and an unoccupied property is forcibly entered and lived in, there are still rules to follow. My parents falsified permission and lied about how long they'd been in my house, which is why it took five months to remove them. Upted. I decided to make some inquiries and spent a couple of days asking around the family about how my parents managed to start their new business after bankruptcy. It's unusual that they were able to recover and launch a new business in under two years. It's not an MLM, as even my parents wouldn't engage in that. Their new business is smaller than their previous one. About half the size. They had at least two employees before, and now it's just the two of them. Someone suggested I watch my credit for identity theft, which I already was since dealing with my parents squatting in my house. They knew nothing was off, but I wasn't sure if they even bothered to remember my legal information in the past decade. I locked down my credit, and there's been no unusual activity so my parents didn't try to steal company funds from me. My paternal grandparents, or what I'd call my good grandparents, genuinely care about me and have no idea where my parents got the money to reopen their business. My parents have called them numerous times since they disinherited my father, but they've been refusing to take their calls since my parents called to brag about their new success. It's clear my parents had no help from my father's side of the family. As for my mother's side, I still had an old list of contacts my parents gave me, which included the landline number for my maternal grandmother. I tried calling her back when I was homeless, but she didn't care. I've never met my maternal grandparents in person, but they're a lot like my parents. It seems my father truly found his soulmate in my mother, as a previous commenter pointed out. They were made for each other. I managed to get in touch with my maternal grandmother once again. She was long divorced from her husband and my maternal grandfather had passed away seven months ago, leaving my mother a sizable inheritance. That's where my parents got the money to restart their business. My maternal grandmother sounded proud of them, but had little interest in speaking about anything else. It's likely why my parents called my grandparents to brag about their success again, wanting to rub salt in the wound since my good grandparents had cut them off. I really don't care, and neither do my good grandparents. Everyone on my paternal side of the family tells my parents to go kick rocks and wants nothing to do with them. I'm not the only one my parents have alienated. My mother's side is full of divorces and drunken loners who hate each other and pretend to act civil. My father's side consists of very normal and nice people, but my father has burned bridges repeatedly. When I was born, my grandparents wanted to be in my life, but my parents kept me away, likely to avoid being judged for their parenting. I would have been happier if they'd sent me to boarding school or to live with my grandparents. But narcissists aren't truly happy unless they have someone else to put down. I can only imagine the things they said about me behind my back my entire life. Either way, it seems my parents did nothing illegal to start a new business. Nothing that can be reported to the IRS. There's no law against using inheritance funds as seed money for self-employment. My mother... Being an only child inherited everything when her father died, including his house and land. That's where my parents are living now. I've seen a photo my maternal grandmother sent me of their new house. Not the nicest, but comparable to my own. It means my parents have a place to live without consequences and likely won't need to bother me again. I want to sell my house and move, but the company I work for has no branch in Arizona. So, it's either I quit and look for new employment in Arizona after selling my house, or stay where I am, and hope my parents leave me alone. I'm looking into job searching, because I really don't want my parents to ever find me again. If moving isn't feasible, getting more cameras for the house would be pointless if I want to sell. However, if I end up stuck here, because I can't find another job in Arizona in the coming months, I might as well install cameras inside and out. I have received good advice on the types of cameras to get and where to place them. I doubt the same situation will ever repeat. But I just don't want my parents to ever seek me out again for any reason. If they need help when they're old, I won't care. They'll get what they deserve. They're dead to me for the rest of my life. And my father's side of the family feels the same. If I ever become a parent or step-parent, 
I'll ensure I never become like my parents, because no child deserves that.